This is going to be a look at some Tyus Bowser films, specifically his play near the end of the 2022 season. Primarily focused on his effort. Really complete game, if you ask me, against the Bengals in the wildcard playoff loss. I will show one play from the Week 18 regular season loss. Tyus Bowser's better than a lot of people think. That's the point. That That's the point of this video. You hear a lot of people talking about the Ravens signing a a veteran outside linebacker. I don't care who they sign that's out there on the market right now. Tyus Bowser will be starting. It's my job to try to convince you of it using the film from this video um, in the pattern or the sequence that I've set up. This is going to be an attempt to show you how complete he is, meaning that he checks off all the boxes of being able to rush the passer, being able to execute pass rush stunts, which you'll see, I think, two examples over here, at least one. He covers people. He's great against the run, whether it's to him or away from him. He's athletic enough to tackle the most athletic quarterbacks like Justin Fields or some one of the most. Hope I can prove it to you in this video and show some of his just exceptional coverage skills in man or zone. Maybe he's not an overwhelming pass rusher in one-on-one -on -one situations. He had seven sacks the last full season that he played. In 2021, I think he was he had two other sacks that were called back for penalties in that season, but a couple of people have called me out on that and said that's not true. But I thought there was one against the Bears and then another one maybe against the Lions, but I could be wrong in 2021. But he, either way, he's extremely effective in schemed pass rush stunts. He's a badass run defender. His athleticism and discipline are equal, which I think is very unique. He's a starter at outside linebacker for this team. Whether Ojabo and Owe develop or not, he is. In my opinion, he's probably a starter for 12 to 15 other teams across the NFL. Let me try to convince you with some of the film. Again, we're going to focus on the game against the Bengals, wildcard playoff loss. He can do anything. He's playing up top here on the first play that we're going to show you. And this is a, a an example of his commitment and his trust in his teammates, and it's an incomplete pass by Burrow. We'll let it run back a couple of times. He trusts his teammates. This is a stunt, so he's initially going to come downhill here and then loop around. He trusts his teammates to run the stunt and pick or clear people as needed or as it's drawn up on the whiteboard, and then he finishes it off. This is one example that I'm using to set up the other techniques and the other things that he did incredibly well in that in that game in a playoff loss when the Ravens defense really played an exceptional game all right play number two he's just physical in coverage he allows the Ravens to do certain things in coverage that other teams can't do this is a four-man rush it ends up being cover three it's a sack by JPP and I think uh Broderick Washington the way the Ravens run their cover three oftentimes with Chuck Clark on the left is he'll drop down to play the flats Patrick Queen will blitz. Those two things are kind of connected. Think of like a rope. When you pull on one end, the entire rope moves, not just the end you're pulling on. And since they're bringing Patrick Queen, Bowser's going to drop out and take over the uh, hook to curl bounce, hook to curl to the field. And look how physical he is. This is what I like. It's natural for him to get his hands on receivers. He doesn't care about the five-yard thing, and neither do I because I'm a Ravens fan. I mean, if you were a Bengals fan and your defensive player was doing this, you would loud it too. You would praise it too. Being physical with receivers is the way to go. You can see Kyle Hamilton and Ty Spouser and then Roquan Smith all get their hands on Boyd running from the slot. Mark, it allows Marcus Williams the freedom to kind of play over the top of Chase to, to the downside here. You got man with Marcus Peters. And Marcus Williams, is, I can't really draw the right, the correct angle here. He's trying to help out over the top. Point is, as an underneath coverage defender in zone, Tyus Bowser is really good. He's as good or better than a lot of inside linebackers across the NFL at that technique. Week before, another example of it. I thought this one was noteworthy. I let it play a couple of times. Dropping out to the flats, dropping through two to get to one, meaning he's moving past two. In this case, Jamar Chase, the inside receiver, is labeled as two to get to one. And this is a throwaway by Burrow. This is a throwaway because he sees that Bowser's in the window and there's really nothing for him to do. Another example of the Ravens dropping uh, the outside linebacker, and Bowser's really good at this. I would say Oway is not. And then drop, or excuse me, bringing 
the inside linebacker from the opposite side. So in this case, it's Roquan Smith. Bowser is dropping out. And then Patrick Queen, whose feet were about right here uh, pre-snap, he's taken over Roquan's drop to the three-receiver side. So the Ravens aren't fooling Joe Burrow. They're just not giving him enough time to make these reads to determine the coverage. They're giving him, enough, him enough different looks to confuse him for an instant, even though I don't think they're really confusing. They're just slowing down the processing. And in my opinion, Tyus Bowser is a huge part of that because of his coverage versatility, his ability to rush, hell, his ability to even play man on tight ends, which you'll see two great examples of here later on in the video. Look, he's one of my favorite players. If I don't have you convinced just by film here, you might be one of those people that wants to see a guy get a sack and you think that's the only thing that matters. The position and the game require more than that. Tyus Bowser gives you a little bit of everything. Here's a sack between with him and Owe splitting it. Owe destroys the right guard. Bowser on his little second effort stutter step beats the left tackle. And I think they split the sack here, but I could be wrong. Either way, they're both there for a big play. Bowser is a huge part of this defense in 2023. Don't get me wrong. Owe is as well. David Ojabo is. But the coverage versatility, the versatility in call that Tyus Bowser brings is very unique to this Ravens team. He almost can play like a safety at times in his ability to cover tight ends. I love his game. I love the impact that he has across all three levels of the defense, meaning on the other side of the line of scrimmage, rushing the passer, at the line of scrimmage, against the run, and then from the line of scrimmage backwards, covering the pass, whether it's zone or man. QB pressure here on the forced fumble by Kyle Hamilton against Hayden Hurst. This is a third and long. Tight end's going to chip and then release out into the flats. Hamilton stays over the top of that and then comes down and gets the fumble late. But watch Bowser. I don't give you the end zone angle on this one. Watch Bowser. Bowser splits this initially, and he's able to hold his ground enough to where when Burrow peels out of there to the right, to the top side of the screen, Bowser's able to get there. I think he actually got a QB pressure for this. Look, his stats for that wild card game was amazing. Clearly, Justin Houston impacted this play as well. But since Houston and Bowser were there, Burrow's got to get rid of the ball quick. Call it a check down if you want. Whatever it is, it's a short throw on a third and long. Allows Hamilton the ability to come up and force the fumble. In my opinion, Bowser's impact sometimes can be larger than the statistical impact he has on that play in that game or even in the season. I think he's a guy that makes other people better. Now I'm going to fast forward this a little bit. This is a replay sequence from 2021. I think gives you a, another idea, hopefully, about the level of versatility that he brings. He's lined up here at edge defender. I think this is a second down against Cleveland. The Ravens have the lead here at home in 2021. I think this is the four interception game. I don't know if you can see that very well, what he does to that right tackle. Yeah, the right tackle's feet apparently got tangled up, according to some people, but it doesn't really look like it to me. But even so, I mean, there's people who said, oh, his sack against the, the, the Bengals was against a horrible left tackle. Oh, his his KO of the right tackle here, the right tackle's feet got tangled up. It's like there's an excuse every time that Bowser's making plays at times. I'm not sure what that's about. He's a hell of a football player. He just KO'd a right tackle in the NFL on the final drive of the game, winning time. You get a great view of it here from the end zone angle. I'm not sure how these, th these things aren't impressive. Uh, for me, he does play a lot of snaps. So some would say, well, why isn't he getting more sacks than seven sacks in 2021? Well, again, I think he actually had nine. I think two of them were taken away by penalty. And we know he was hurt last year, so he didn't get a lot of rep, didn't get a lot of snaps because I don't think he played till week eight. I believe he's trying to communicate to Geno Smith and Chuck Clark that one of them needs to come over here. They don't. So he just says, all right, I'll just go ahead and cover. Covers the tight end perfectly. Takes it away. I mean, beautiful football play, if you ask me. That's third down. You get to see the end zone angle. I'm not sure why the, why the video slowed up so much. I must have hit something. Here he is coming across the screen now. Ball's well thrown. Ball does end up in, I think it's Hooper's hands. I think it's Hooper. 
Bowser's there to challenge, ends up being incomplete, doesn't control it throughout the catch when making contact with the ground. All right, so now we've got fourth down the very next play, 2021. You saw Bowser KO the right tackle on second down, cover the other tight end, 81, which I think was Hooper, on, second, on third down. And then here's fourth down, him man-to-man -man against David Njoku. Completed pass, runs him down, makes the tackle, short of the first down. Appears to have injured himself in some manner on that play. I feel like that three-play sequence just tells you a whole lot about what you can do with Ty Bowser. You can rush him. You can use him to guard people man-to-man. -man. And in, in the heat of the moment, that third down play one play ago, if someone, Geno Stone, Chuck Clark, whatever, doesn't get in the right look, Ty Bowser gives you the versatility to just say, all right, I'll go ahead and cover this guy myself. All right, some uh, pass rush examples, because I know that you know people are going to want to see that or at least be able to talk about it in the comment section. No worries. I think you've got Bowser up here in the middle of this, and I think this is a readout blitz. The running back, David Montgomery, who's now with the Lions, blocks Brandon Stevens. So here is... Bowser, here is Stevens. I think the running back is going to step up and block Stevens, and when he does, you'll see Bowser hesitate for a moment and then take off and go and get the sack. And you see how strong Justin Fields is, too. Once Bowser gets a hold of him, Fields does not want to go down. Bowser holds on. This is what I love about him. There's a tenaciousness. There's a competitiveness. I think he's a great football player, as you can tell by listening to me talk about him. All right, same game. Again, I'm quite sure there'll be people say, oh, it's against... This is against a certain left tackle. This guy had a long career. Uh, I think played most of the time with the Eagles. But he gets a forced fumble here off the edge. Played a whale of a game against the Bears that week in 2021. I think he had two and a half sacks, and I thought he should have been credited for another one. Gets a forced fumble here. It's kind of a, a unique one. Very strong. The bull rush is good. Forced fumble with the left hand. Get another sack against the Broncos. I want to show you his awareness level. He's going to get run action away or run flow away and the quarterback booting. And for whatever reason, based on the call, Bowser, who's down here at the bottom of the screen, isn't going to run with it at all. He doesn't respect it. He's just going to take off to the quarterback, get himself a sack. I kept rooting for him in 2021 to get to double-digit sacks. He's never done that yet. I think he only has 19 sacks for his career. If you are one of the people who says we need a situational pass rusher, I mean, I'm fine with that. <clears throat> Tyus Bowser is going to play 40 snaps a game, though. He should. He needs to be on the field. His versatility, his ability to get to the quarterback when asked, his ability to coverage, cover, his ability to stop the run, which I'll show you here in a moment. By the way, this is a touchdown pass from Joe Burrow in the playoff game. Tyus Bowser's not on the field. Justin Houston is, who's one of my favorite players. JPP is, who I thought played well for the Ravens last year. They didn't get to the quarterback. It's not like... It's not like every time they're on the field we get to the quarterback. There's plenty of reps where those guys did not get to the quarterback. There's, there'll be reps where David Ojabo doesn't and Odafe Owe doesn't. I put this in here intentionally just, just to show that you know there needs to be balance when people talk about players, especially a guy who, yes, he only had two sacks in 2022, but he missed a whole lot of time trying to come back from a torn Achilles. Against the run, incredibly strong football player couple of plays here uh, consecutively, if you ask me, that are similar. Against the Steelers at home, 2021, just refusing to get blocked by the tight end. You will get the end zone angle here, by the way. You let me know if you agree. I, I'm down with us signing a situational pass rusher. I would love for us to bring back Justin Houston. Let him play 20, 22, 24 snaps a game, primarily pass rush situations. Tyus Bowser's going to be on the field in those situations, though. Because he can make plays everywhere you put him. And he does, and that's why I'm showing you the film of it here. I mean, you can't argue with the film, if you ask me, showing that he's capable of doing these things, uh, particularly in the game that mattered most. I mean, that game against the Bengals, I think it was Coach Evans, Sip to Tally, maybe it was someone else, mentioned how well Bowser played in that game. And I remember listening to it on, the, on his YouTube channel. Maybe it wasn't him, maybe it was someone else, and being like, well, that's cool, man. It was nice to hear somebody else give him a shout-out because I don't feel like Tyus Bowser's a guy who gets talked about enough. I feel like he's somebody who just brings it every day, shows up, and keeps chopping wood no matter what they ask him to do. One of my favorite guys, obviously. We'll look at one more run play from 2021. I love this one just because they're trying to say, oh, we're going to we're gonna pin you down. 
with a receiver, in some cases a tight end, like the previous play against the Steelers. You can draw those up sometimes if you want. But if the guy that you're trying to block is just a badass and he's stronger than you and he's better trained and has better technique, I mean, you get stuff like this. Eyes on the running back in the backfield. This pulling lineman is supposed to loop around. This is what I call the worst play in football, but it works. And uh, in this case, Kareem Hunt ends up taking it downhill, not following the lineman. Bowser's there. Let me know what you think, man. I'm, I'm fine if you have a different opinion than me. I just wanted to try to sell people on the fact that Ty Bowser is a hell of a football player and deserves more credit and more respect than he gets. This one shows his athleticism and his discipline. I'll replay it again from the end zone angle, or from both angles, excuse me. You're going to get motion across. Bowser's left unblocked. Watch his eyes the whole time. You can see his face mask, not necessarily his eyes, but you can see his face mask. That motion doesn't bother him at all. He is locked in on fields and the zone read element of this. And then he's athletic enough to get involved and make the tackle. I just This one always struck me because not only do you have a guy who is smart, strong, very versatile, but he's also athletic enough to tackle Justin Fields one-on-one, -on -one, stay outside leverage, stay generally square here, not let the motion bother him at all, not give up his outside shoulder. Beautiful football play, if you ask me. You may not be as impressed with just with um, Ty Spouser as I am. I just think he's incredibly versatile, strong and athletic, and disciplined at the same time, which I think is rare. Makes everyone else around him better. I think he plays 40, 40-plus 40 snaps a game next year. If we bring in a situational pass rusher, rusher, if we bring back Justin Houston, great. That would be awesome. I would love it. Bring him in on pass rushdowns. Let him get after people. Let him use up, use up all of his energy in those pass rush moves. Ty Bowser needs to be on the field, period. He's a complete outside linebacker, complete football player, one of the best football players the Ravens have, and I'm a huge fan. You guys let me know if you agree with any of my commentary here. If you disagree with parts of it, no problem. Uh, if you think other people would like this commentary about Ty Bowser, this film study about Ty Bowser, please consider grabbing the link and sharing this on social media to help the video get more reach. If you have any suggestions for other players you'd like to, for me to look at, combining 2022 film and maybe some career film, let me know. The next guy I intend to take a little bit of a detailed look at is, is second-year defensive tackle Travis Jones. Appreciate you guys' time.